Hi, guys. Oh, my God, it's Ugly Bob. What the hell are you doing here? Castlevania fans, this is part 7 of my 27 part reviews on Castlevania, focusing on Super Castlevania 4. Now this game, I'm going to uh, treat it much like the Japanese regard it. It is nothing more than a... It is intended as nothing more than a remake of the original Castlevania. According to their official timeline, it does not have a different date than uh, Castlevania, so in that regard it is different, but... When it comes to be it being a remake, what a remake it is. It's like, not only are there more levels, almost all the levels have been redesigned, new obstacles to take into account for the uh, new abilities such as whipping in eight directions, even the stages that have similarities, uh, like the classic staircase or even parts of the hallway in stage five or six, that is the first stage in the original Castlevania, it really feels like a new gameplay experience. Um, this game first came out in 1991 and was uh, close to a Super Nintendo launch title. I remember uh, a funny story about renting the Super Nintendo before it came out. I actually preferred this game over Super Mario World. I, the two times that I had rented the Super Nintendo before uh, being able to finally buy it, $150 was a lot of money back then, uh, I rented it both times, Super Castlevania 4, and really loved it. I didn't play uh, Super Mario RPG until I actually got the system, Super Mario World that is. Um, one of the greatest enhancements for this remake, we'll regard it as, besides the uh, gra obvious graphical improvements, is the music. In my previous reviews, I had noted that I am not generally a fan of the NES sound, uh, the NES cap sound capability, mostly because of the sound chips. The skill and the composition is there, but it just couldn't output that well. Super Castlevania 4 changed everything, especially in uh, this footage that I'm showing. Um, this is one of the best versions of Bloody Tears that I've ever heard. My favorite is probably the one on yet another remake of Castlevania, Castlevania Chronicles, which was, which will be covered in a future review. Um, other pieces, standout pieces, include uh, the Vampire Killer and Simon's Theme, which was actually introduced in this game, new piece. It plays during the first stage, and it would be used in uh, several later Castlevania games, so we got ourselves a new classic piece, and it is indeed as such. Another part of this being a remake is that the challenge is decreased compared to the original Castlevania. Simon now has the ability to move in midair, so you don't have to, have to commit yourself totally to a jump. Also, a lot of the enemies are less challenging because you can, act, you can literally use your eight-directional whip as a shield. It especially makes the end Dracula uh, a lot less challenging. Uh, that and a famous trick that I'm pretty sure everyone knows about. Um, there are some challenging bosses and some of the scenario, some of the, uh, some of the terrain can be difficult to navigate, but uh, in general it's a much softer challenge than the other Castlevania game. If I had to say it, it's probably the easiest traditional Castlevania type game. Not that I'm really complaining about that. Uh, fun factor, I definitely feel that this is a very fun traditional Castlevania game. The Even though it has some setbacks from Castlevania 3, which is something I had just reminded myself of uh, in playing the game again, I had previously regarded Super Castlevania 4 as probably the best traditional Castlevania, but after playing Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse again, I realized that has some obvious superiority to this one, including multiple playable characters, different stage design. The stages in this game are all pretty much side-scrolling, with one or two exceptions. The stages just aren't don't seem to be as well designed. The whip, the eight-directional whipping and the using it like an arm from Bionic Commando, that really was a wow factor, especially when this game came out in 91. It allowed me to kind of cloud my judgment about the game. Let, don't misunderstand me, it's still an awesome game. It's just, I feel, in hindsight, I have to recognize that it's not as good as I used to believe it was. Um, 
The last thing I want to say about this game is how hilariously bad some of the enemies' names are. Uh, the dancing ghoul boss is actually called Fred Scare and Paula a Ghoul or something. You have to look in the manual, it's just hilarious. Um, the box art is also awesome. Classic Super Nintendo illustrations. I sometimes suspect that, uh, much like uh, Drew, uh, Drew Struzan that the Nostalgia Critic mentioned, there was this great unknown artist who did a lot of video game covers and just is unheralded. And I really hope that someone is able to find out if it was indeed the same person responsible for all these great works. It's no Mega, Ma it's no original Mega Man type art. It's really good stuff. Um, last but not least, uh, the uh, this game is kind of funny because it was actually re-released by Majesco around the year 2000. That's probably why it's not as rare as a Castlevania game as some others. Um, I'll see you in uh, part 8 of my Castlevania series, and the next one should be Castlevania Bloodlines, the sole game on the Genesis.